someone that you're following is painting this dropshipping e-commerce journey to be this smooth sailing 100% of the time, you know, Lambo driving, private jet flying, easy route to success. The reality is it's going to be a challenge, but that's what makes it so rewarding in the end when you get to the side and you've got a business where you can run from anywhere in the world. You've smashed your previous income. You can do it all from a laptop. Originally, I fell into the myth that because everything is available online, I could just piece it together myself. You know, people say, oh, you don't need a course because, you know, it's all available on YouTube. So I was like, okay, get it on YouTube then. Not realizing the overwhelming behemoth of a task that would be to try and filter out the noise and piece it all together myself. Earlier this week, I was able to be in Italy, I was in Milan and Lake Como. And while I was there just for four days, I knew that my store, it generated about 11,000 pounds worth of sales. And I could just see the Shopify orders come in while I was enjoying pizza in front of the cathedral in Milan. And so when I see someone at that, like that fork in the roads, that junction, that's why we started Dropship Unlocked, because I really don't want someone to go down that road and then never experience the life-changing potential that they could have had. So that's the most dangerous thing I think that dropshipping gurus do is they... Welcome to the Dropship Unlocked podcast, your key to unlocking the secrets of high ticket dropshipping. I'm Lewis Smith, founder of Dropship Unlocked, and with me is our client success coach, James Erdley. Now, when we're not recording podcast episodes, we're running our own e-commerce businesses and helping aspiring entrepreneurs launch their own high ticket dropshipping businesses. So if you're ready to learn how to build your own six or even seven figure business, pick up a copy of my book, The Home Turf Advantage, whether you're looking to replace your income or launch a side hustle. I wrote this book as a roadmap to help you launch a low maintenance, high profit e-commerce business that gives you the freedom to spend more time with your family, travel the world and work on your own terms. Ready to join us? Visit htabook.com to get your copy today. Now sit back, relax and let's unlock your potential with the Dropship Unlocked podcast. The common dropshipping advice that you've probably heard when you first got interested and started researching online business is not necessarily correct. Today, Lewis and I, after our combined decade of experience running these types of businesses, are going to break down what the myths are and also what the reality is and how do you actually grow one of these businesses from our experience. So, Lewis, let's dive straight into it. What are some of the most common myths that you hear from dropshipping gurus and so to give us a bit of a flavor about what the reality is of growing and building a dropshipping business? Yeah, definitely. It really is like the Wild West out there online. If you look into dropshipping, you're going to get bombarded with all of these different gurus with their own agendas, you know, telling you the convenient information and painting an overly simplified picture of quick success. But as you and I both know, James, the reality is that it demands a lot more attention and effort and understanding than perhaps it's often portrayed to. We often liken it to buying a gym membership on January the 1st, as many people do as their New Year's resolution, and then having the expectation of having a perfect physique by January the 31st after just, you know, a 30-day challenge that you saw on Instagram, joining a gym, and then expecting everything to be transformed within 30 days. Unrealistic expectations that you're never going to reach, and so therefore it's problematic and sometimes it makes you blame the model itself but that's not necessarily the case it was the expectations that were set that were the problem and perhaps the model that you were following made it more difficult to achieve the results that you were setting out to one of the reasons for that is that often it will be people telling you online to just sell the cheapest products you can get your hands on the most easily accessible lowest barrier to entry suppliers that you can sign sell those products, throw them up on a quick Shopify store, run some Facebook ads to them. But the reality is that you you have to be able to provide quality products and great customer service to build a brand that you can really be proud to stand behind and that will have long-term sustainable results. With the home turf advantage model that we use, it's, it's kind of like you're running a restaurant where you're the chef and sometimes you come out and you speak with the guests and you know you're proud of your menu and you can explain the ingredients and how the dish was prepared and maybe even you take feedback from those guests and implement that into future dishes but then on the other side you've got these gurus online with the model they're pitching that's kind of like the other side of the scale imagine a cheap low quality volume and profit they're trying to just make as many sales regardless of quality there's not much thought but you know long-term health or customer satisfaction or retention or anything like that so 
you have to ask yourself at this stage, and, and you are in the benefit of having not gone down either of these roads yet, which would you prefer to stand behind as a business? Yeah, so I think the reality is that online people and people that are trying to teach you online, they have to play into the algorithm a little bit. And we've noticed that with running this podcast, the things that sort of hit really well and do well on the algorithm is the type of things that are like five simple steps and it's the quick wins that people want to hear. And so often that leaves people to then give out information that's the quick information, the easy things to tell you. Whereas in reality, what we hope to do is to shine a beacon on actually the reality of, of running a dropshipping business and how you can run a business that is something you can be proud of and will provide a sustainable income stream for the long term. Yeah, exactly. And and it's important when you take on board that information about building a long-term business that you are able to cross-verify that information with a community of other people with the same goals as you and, and you're all learning from credible sources. You know, the problem sometimes is that you're learning from a party who has no accountability because they've made a YouTube video and when it doesn't then work for you, there's no recourse. You can't do anything. You can't blame them because it was just a free YouTube video. And, you know, there's a real disconnect between the person teaching the model and the the person trying to adapt and, and implement that model. And so I think the first thing you have to do really, if you want to succeed long term with this, is accept that in the world of business, as in any business, there are going to be bumps in the road. You've got to get around the right people to prepare you for that. And so if someone that you're following is painting this dropshipping e-commerce journey to be this smooth sailing, 100% of the time, you know, Lambo driving, private jet flying, easy route to success, the reality is you're going to be sorely disappointed when you hit your first roadblock and you realize, hang on a sec, not only does it not work, but now I don't know why it doesn't work and I have no one to ask. It's like, you know, when you're watching a five minute YouTube, YouTube tutorial video about like how to assemble a wardrobe or how to build a table or something that you've just bought. Or, yeah, I, I was assembling a new pram recently and it was a bit of a nightmare. So I was like straight to YouTube kind of watching it and they make it look so simple in the video. And so you watch it and think, yeah, I, I could do that. It's easy. And then you go and it's like half an hour later, you're still trying to do what they did in this five minute video and you're like why is it taking me so much longer and it's because they didn't give you the full step-by-step -step walkthrough and kind of like help you troubleshoot things when they came up it was in their interest to make it look easy because they were making a slick video that looked really good and easy on youtube and you know they weren't there for you to ask when you then got stuck and that's just the limits of a youtube video you don't then have somebody to to speak to afterwards and when you're actually putting the actions and you're actually following the actions that they've told you to follow it's not being able to ask somebody when you get stuck inevitably or if something's not working as you expected it to work. And that's the benefit of, of having a community around you. But fortunately, we've both been there. Lewis, we've both followed the, the quick advice. I certainly have. That's when I first got into drop shipping. I started to drop ship sort of cheap products. And so we can see things from both points of view. So going after the, the free advice and then also going and joining a program and seeing the difference in terms of the results you get. So could you share, keen to learn, I'm sure people listening as well, what are some of the mistakes that you made and uh, the mistakes that you learned from when you first got started with dropshipping? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely lost a lot of money following poor advice and, you know, learning the importance of, of original thinking and making sure I'm following a proven model that's applicable to me and my circumstances, i.e. at the time, someone living in the UK, someone operating in the UK, things are very different if you try to apply a, an internationally generic model or a model that's you know set up and taught in the US market and you try to just shoehorn that into a different market like the UK there are going to be some nasty surprises along the way unless you have that local level of support so originally I fell into the myth that because everything is available online I could just piece it together myself you know people say oh you don't need a course because you know it's all available on YouTube so I was like okay get it on YouTube then not realizing the overwhelming behemoth of a task that would be to try and filter out the noise and, and piece it all together myself. But I just thought, that I'll just have a dabble myself. I'll dabble around. I'll read a few blogs. You know, I'm pretty good at figuring this stuff out. If I get stuck, I'll find a forum or, you know, a Facebook group or a Reddit thread or something where they'll be telling me what to do. But you forget, there are people behind these Facebook groups. There are people behind these Reddit threads. And if you saw those people, not saying all of them, but if you saw them, you'd realize that is not a credible source to be learning from. But because it's like written form, it's almost like a leveler. All information looks the same because it's just in text form, right? So you kind of think, oh, well, because it's on a Reddit thread, that post has as much credibility as the post below it. But one could be written by an absolute e-commerce genius master. The other one by a kid working out of his mum's basement that has never built a business in his life, right? So you have to have that picture of like who you're learning from. What's the source of the information? 
And yeah, I mean, it, it's easy to fall into that trap when you're scrolling through Instagram, everyone's saying how easy it is. You start getting targeted by the, the guru's ads being like, oh, you know, you can have a hundred K business and in no time, it's as easy as just copy my one, two, three step system. And it, it's kind of like, well, if it's that lucrative, it can't be that hard. It's like this bias that starts to form in your mind. So you think, okay, I'm going to have a go. And if that's you now, if, if you're seeing those ads and you're, you've got that like cynical, skeptical voice in your head and you're thinking, what would happen if I went down that route? Let me save you the heartache of doing it and tell you what happened because I did do it. So I've been down that road. Here's where it leads to. You spend ages building, creating, optimizing, launching. You deliberate over your logo design, your color scheme. You get it perfect. It's really slick, this super sharp store. And then you sign some suppliers, maybe a few you find on AliExpress or Salehu or Doba or Worldwide Brands or any of these suppliers, whatever, like usually from China or, or suppliers abroad. And you get about a month in and you're kind of still dabbling and tinkering around and, and putting stuff together. You start running some ads maybe on, on Facebook, on Instagram, and they're really sharp ads and you think, yeah, it's going to crush it. I'm buying the products for, you know, $5 and I'm and selling them for 30. I'm going to make my millions here. But then after a while, it's just nothing. It's just crickets. And you're like, did I do something wrong? But this is where the most dangerous thing happens. You then start making some sales and, and it would almost be easier if you just fell flat on your face at that point and realized, oh, the model's flawed. Okay, I'll stop here. But it's because it does work that it's problematic because it gives people this false sense of hope. They actually start making some sales. They see the cha-ching on their phones and they're like, oh, I've done it. I've made $30. What they don't realize is the, the $5 of cost then gets added to whatever the shipping fee is, then gets added to the customs import duty fee. Then obviously you've got a 30-day delay. You get all these issues that arise and start to bubble to the surface, you know, a month, two months, six months into the process. Then the customer says, I want to return the item, just cancel my order. And you're like, well, I can't. It's on a boat halfway from China now. I can't, you know, I've already paid for it. It's gone. The supplier's not going to take it back in China. They start getting complaints then because you, you turn people down for refunds. And so then you get bad reviews about your brand online. And, you know, you, you were so proud of this brand and you wanted to build this amazing brand and suddenly it's being tarnished, its reputation's being torn apart online and you've got angry emails coming at you and every time you open your laptop, it's miserable because you've got, you know, customer complaints filling up your inbox. You're making no profit on any of your orders. You're spending too much on ads. You know, suddenly your supplier just stops responding out the blue and you've got all these pending orders and your supplier's not replying to you. And you think, what do I do here? This wasn't in the YouTube video that I was watching. They, they said I could just do this and I'd be driving a Lambo and, you know, flying private by now. And you can't figure out what you've done wrong. But the reality is you haven't done anything wrong or you, you may have done, but you don't, yeah, you don't know who to ask, right? And, and so it might just be that the products you picked are not going to work. You haven't validated them. The ads you're running at, like the, so many issues that it could be that when you can't figure out why your store is not converting, why your ads are so expensive, why delivery takes so long, it can be really frustrating. And the trouble is you've got no one to ask because there's no blueprint there. You kind of, you feel stuck, you feel lost. You feel almost like cheated by those YouTubers who said it was so easy. And then the worst bit of all, the confirmation bias kicks in because then you self-justify and you say, ah, I knew it was a scam all along and that's the trouble because you think yeah, yeah yeah that's why it didn't work because it was a scam all along yeah that's that's it and you start to like give yourself an out and you say ah, it's not my fault that it didn't work out it's because i was tricked into this model of selling cheap products from china and oh, all the people that said drop shipping was dead and it was a scam now i see what they mean okay yeah no it doesn't work okay great write that model off back to my nine to five job until retirement and then that's it <laughs> you know it's just like it's a really sad story and so when I see someone at that, like that fork in the roads, that junction, that's why we started Dropship Unlocked, because I really don't want someone to go down that road and then never experience the life changing potential that they could have had, having now seen what it's like on the other side with the model that we use, the Home Turf Advantage, which we'll talk a bit about, like how much different it is and how easy it would be to write the whole thing off as a scam by going down the wrong road. So that's the most dangerous thing. I think that dropshipping gurus do it. They provide a model that does actually work, but causes more problems than it's worth. And it leads people to become disheartened with the model and just give up completely on their dreams, which is a real travesty. It is. And I'm so glad that I found Dropship Unlocked because when you're describing that story, I couldn't believe how similar that is. That That's so similar to the actual story that I experienced. And so hopefully people listening, if you haven't been through that already, understand that that sort of story that Lewis has been through there will happen to you as well. You know, we're nothing special. You know, we, we've gone through these same challenges. We started from the same position as you, trying to work out how to make it work in the online business world. And I distinctly remember following advice because I thought, as you said, Lewis, 
well, I can piece this all together myself for free because surely there's enough YouTube content out there to be able to go step by step by following different videos. And that's what I did. But I ran into those same problems where as soon as anything went wrong or it didn't quite look the same as the video, I was then on my own, stranded. And the only way I could, uh, you know, I had to make things up myself. I had to work things out myself. And whenever you're doing that, you'll ultimately have to learn from the mistakes that you're going to make. And when I made those mistakes, fortunately, there was something there to, to, to fall on. And I didn't just write off the whole model. I realized that it was actually just the type of dropshipping that I was doing that was the issue. And it was never going to work for me. It was never my type of mod business model that would work. And uh, I distinctly remember on my story, so I followed the YouTube advice. I sold products that were I could source for maybe $10 and I could sell them for 30 And it led to disheartened customers who were returning products to me from the US because that was the only way that they could get their money back was if they returned it to me in the UK. And a bit of a turning point for me, it's a funny story, but when I received this return back, the smell of the packaging, I, I can still remember, it was so bad that I, I was convinced that it was actually the customer decided to make it smell awful on purpose so that it was a reminder or you know, his way of uh, you know telling me that what I've sent to him was awful. I don't know whether that's true, but honestly, the smell, I can still remember it to this day. But it was when I realized that this was the sort of hassle that came along with it. I was never told. And I realized that there must be a better way. So that's sort of the typical guidance that we get. Let's transition. How, how do we get away from that typical guidance? What's the difference with sort of real world dropshipping and, and how, com how does it work in the real world? Yeah, well, well, gurus will often oversimplify the whole thing, as we've said, and they'll omit to the real challenges, right? So, you know, it's like showing the, the summit of the mountain photo, but not the climb and the grueling journey that it took to actually get there. I always try to be very open at Dropship Unlocked because obviously we run an education company. So I have to be very careful about like how we position this business model because I absolutely don't want to come across as a hypocrite if we're teaching something that, you know, anyone gets the impression is, is easy. We, we always start by saying this is not easy. This is not a get rich quick route. If that's what you're looking for, this is not for you. But I could not be more clear with that. And in fact, I actually don't believe that that even exists. So for the people searching for that, they're just going to be forever in this holding pattern of like getting their hopes up, trying something, getting disappointed when they have to actually put in some work and then kind of like searching for the next thing in, the, in this constant hope and they'll never get anywhere with it. So for me, that's actually a, a really important point as well. It's the satisfaction of knowing that it took me some hard work to reach the results that I enjoy. Because for me now, I've figured out that for a big part of the enjoyment, the satisfaction for me is the journey, is the challenge and the actual build process. It's like overcoming those barriers and those obstacles and hurdles are the thing that makes the result at the end of it worthwhile. You know, when you hear about people that just win the lottery and then within like a year, they're bankrupt because they weren't mentally prepared to get that rich that quickly. They weren't, they hadn't worked hard enough for it. And so it just arrived and they were like, I don't know what to do with it and just spent it all. And kind of, you know, you have to go through some of that pain sometimes in order to make the result on the other side worth, worth having achieved. So I think you've got to be any business that's worth running it takes time, it takes effort, it takes hard work, but that's part of the fun. If you can embrace that and say, that's the challenge that I'm going to enjoy, then it's amazing. And if you can seek mentors and resources that provide authentic insights, not just the theory, not just like, hey, this is the best way to do it because I've studied this, I've worked in e-commerce for years, you know, unless they run their own e-commerce businesses then they won't have felt that that weight on their shoulders like you're going to experience. And so you need people on your side who've been down the exact path that you're going down, who felt that weight of like, hey, this decision affects my financial future, my family's future. Therefore, I'm not going to take it lightly and just, you know, say, oh, because I learned it on some YouTube video, I've actually done this myself and it works, right? That's, that's the kind of community that I think you need to surround yourself with ideally people local in the same market as you so that you've got people to turn to when you do face those inevitable challenges because they, they're going to be there, right? I just accept now you are going to face them. So then the question becomes, well, okay, how do I best prepare myself for when I face them? That's the way I try and look at it. And often that community that people get part of becomes the reason why they enjoy the journey so much. They've got people around them to enjoy it with. But it's a cliche because it's so true. If anything you want to achieve, you know, to make it worthwhile, if it's going to be worthwhile, it will have to be difficult. And I think there's a there's a cliche there, but there's for a reason. 
you know, it's going to be a challenge, but that's what makes it so rewarding in the end when you get to the side and you've got a business where you can run from anywhere in the world. You've smashed your previous income. You can do it all from a laptop. There's going to be challenges to get to that stage because of how good the rewards are at the end. So what would you say, Lewis, is the sort of typical advice that you heard and you might hear when you first look into dropshipping online? The typical advice, I think, that's so prevalent online and, and it's prevalent because it's there's such a low barrier to entry is sell cheap products from China with what they don't tell you, usually a four week delivery time. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter, but I mean, the long delivery time is just part of the problem with, with that model. It's the kind of flash in the pan, trending products. Use one of these research tools to find out a product that's hot, that's trending, that's popular like as soon as i hear those words i think oh man that's not a business that's a flash in the pan bit of quick cash you know like you're selling something that's trending right now on tiktok and then in a few months no one will want it and you you'll have to start from scratch and build all of that stuff again you get no cumulative benefit of having worked in the industry for years on your brand because you have to keep restarting every time something is no longer trending so you're building a new store around a new product as soon as your previous product stops selling. And I think the word scam does get overused and, and misdefined nowadays. People are very quick to write something off as a scam because, as I mentioned before, the sad thing is that what they're doing, it, it, it's not a scam. It does work. It is a business model. It's just razor-thin profit margins, angry customers, a nightmare to run in terms of admin and no long-term like enterprise value. You're not building an asset that's going to be saleable or, or life-changing in any way in, in years to come. You just might make a bit of kind of pocket money on the side, but it's not something that's going to allow you to leave your job and retire long-term. So I think it's nice and comforting for people. And this is difficult to hear for people who might be listening to this, who are quick to, to call things scams. Like it's sometimes you've got to look inwardly and say, is it really a scam? Are all these guys that they, they label online scammers or are they just teaching a flawed model that isn't optimal? That's the thing. Because it's nice and comforting if you've done a course and it didn't work to say it was a scam because it's a fallback, right? And, and it allows you to say, oh, I just got scammed. But the reality is, did they just get scammed or did they just pick a flawed model? And with selling cheap, products usually from abroad using social media ads that method in a nutshell is like getting on the slow overcrowded train you know that's going to take you through every single stop along the journey there's going to you're never going to get a seat it's going to be hot and sweaty it's going to be uncomfortable and it will take you a lot longer to get to your destination you might get there the train itself is not a scam it's just a very inefficient way of getting to your destination right there will be a lot of problems a lot more admin definitely won't be as comfortable Whereas the home turf advantage model that we both now use in our own businesses and teach within Dropship Unlocked, that's like taking the direct flight. That's like going from one city to another with a direct flight. Yes, there's a little bit of upfront investment for the ticket, but it's faster, it's more direct, it's more comfortable. You can watch a movie on the way, you always get a seat. You know, that's the journey that I'd rather be on. I don't know which one I'd rather be on as well. It's so true. It's the, it's the choice between the quick but you know, upfront investment and being able to be around a community or it's the choice of having to work it out yourself, make the mistakes and lose more money inevitably because you've, uh, you've decided to go on your own. So there's a choice there to be made, I think. But I'm keen to hear more about the home turf advantage and the differences it really has because it is so widely different to the, the advice that gets given by dropshipping gurus. So could you tell me a little bit more about how the home turf advantage model that you teach is different? Yeah, absolutely. So the home turf advantage model focuses on working with the local suppliers in the market that you're in. So it's about relationship building. It's about, you know, working with the UK based suppliers. So that doesn't mean that the products are necessarily manufactured in the UK always, although sometimes they are. It just means that the products are already in the UK with the suppliers. So they've already been imported from wherever and they are ready to be dispatched to your customers with next day delivery. That's the key thing. So it means you take an order today from a customer, it will arrive at their front doorstep tomorrow. No long delivery times, no angry emails from customers when they're waiting for their products, no disappointment and missing certain delivery deadlines. It's, it's getting it out straight away, usually in the niches that we advise going into within our program. The products as well that we advise selling. And the other thing is we advise selling products that are higher priced. So we call it high ticket. And that means making upwards of £100 in profit per sale, often much more. So not the sale value, the actual profit value. So imagine if you're selling a product that's £2,000 in, in price and you have a 30% profit margin from your supplier, which is fairly typical with this type of dropshipping, 
that's £600 profit on a single sale, single transaction, right? So say you said my target is to make £10,000 net profit per month. That's how much I need to be able to leave my job and maybe my partner can leave her job too and we can go and do whatever, travel the world on £10,000 profit per month. To do that with this model, you need 17 sales per month, right? So that's just over one sale every other day on average throughout the month to make £10,000 profit per month. Not sales, not these like sales screenshots that you see where they say, I made 10K in sales. This is 10K profit after costs, right? So that's really important. And don't misinterpret that as me saying that it's easy, but just look at how much more attainable and simple that route to 10k is yes you still need to build a store you still need to sign supplies you're still going to run ads but you need to do a lot less of all of those things in order to get to the point of making the same net income hopefully that makes sense and that isn't misinterpreted as me saying it's it's easy it's just very simple process no that's really clear i think it helps to illustrate the point that the numbers are very much on our side with this business model we don't need to be doing loads of sales every day to have a really consistent, solid monthly net income. The other thing is that I've met most of the suppliers that I work with in person, as I'm sure you have as well, James, right? And because of that, I mean, that just wouldn't be possible with the international model, right? It's just this kind of faceless communication, usually going through Google Translate, you know, trying to translate it back to English. And it just means that with this model, my suppliers know me, they trust me, you know, and because of that, they can offer better rates, to me, they can help us out with deals. They can offer express delivery if we need it. Like if we've got to have something dispatched really quickly, they can do that. And they'll always bring new deals to us first. And often in our Dropship Unlocked community, our members who use the Home Turf Advantage model will become some of the largest retailers for the brands that they sell for, which is amazing. Then on the other side of things, a little bit around how the Home Turf Advantage is different in terms of an advertising methodology. So we're not using social media ads that are very expensive, which leads to a very high cost per acquisition and usually quite a low conversion rate because it's hard to convert people from a Facebook or Instagram scrolling experience through to buying a high ticket product and often leads to problems with ad account bans and you know Facebook and Instagram accounts getting shut down. They don't like the poor customer experience of dropshipping from abroad, those platforms and therefore the long delivery times. And so it, it leads to them sometimes banning accounts. And so I'm sure many people listening will have experienced that as well. But the way we do it, we, we scale up our brands using Google Ads. And so with that, you've got search intent traffic where people are searching for the products that you sell so that you can you could scale a store to £100,000 per month in sales without even running meta ads like Facebook or Instagram or, or TikTok or anything like that. You could do it solely with Google ads. And the reason is if they're searching for gray sofa on Google or gas barbecue, they're much closer to being ready to buy that item than someone who's just mindlessly scrolling through Facebook, right? So it's not that expensive or difficult to convert someone to a purchase if you have the right products and your website set up in the right way. And this is exactly the type of business model that I now use for my stores. And it's the type of business model that I use and I know that I can travel anywhere in the world and I'll still generate income without having to deal with returns, without having to deal with difficult customers and without having to deal with long delivery times where customers are, are chasing you up. I've got my products being sent to customers as fast as the next day. And also it's all on autopilot essentially with that Google ad campaign that's taught. I don't need to be constantly looking at my ad campaigns. And I've also learned how to hire VAs so that all of the customer service is handled as well. So that's why earlier this week, I was able to be in Italy, I was in Milan and Lake Como. And while I was there just for four days, I knew that my store, it generated about £11,000 worth of sales. And I could just see the Shopify orders come in while I was enjoying pizza in front of the cathedral in Milan. So th this is the sort of thing that, as Lewis says, there's always challenges. It's difficult and you have to work hard to get to this stage. But this is the business model that I follow to enable this lifestyle that I'm now able to, to live. So on those points of challenges, Lewis, there's always going to be challenges involved. So we never say that it's easy or a get rich quick scheme, but it is a simple method to follow once you follow the steps that, that is shown in the Dropship Unlock program, teaching the home turf advantage. So Lewis, I'd like to, to dig in as well some of the challenges that you face when growing your your business now, your home turf advantage business, um, let me know a little bit about the challenges that you faced and how you overcame them. 
Yeah, when you're first starting out uh, as an e-commerce entrepreneur, you've got things like supplier, reliability, customer satisfaction, marketing, sales, like that you're juggling a lot when you start. It really is like a juggling act. You've got all of these plates spinning everywhere and you're trying to make sure that you don't drop one. Now, we show you the systems to ensure that you can balance this all initially yourself because, you know, the cost might be prohibitive to prevent you from hiring a team immediately. And that's okay. That's the same for most of our members. But eventually, using the, the strategies that we show, you can actually automate a lot of that and then hire a virtual assistant to take on the rest of it so that you can outsource the remaining parts of running the business that can't be automated, right? But initially, yeah, it can feel like you're wearing all the hats, especially if you choose to go it alone without following a program like ours. 100%. Yeah, completely agree. So finally, Lewis, what sort of actionable steps would you tell people to follow after they listen to this episode? so that they can get started in the right way. So the first step would be planning, making sure you select the right platform, understand your target market, select your niche, which products are you going to focus on, and just building slowly but with intention, you know, making sure that you're you're setting the foundations for long-lasting success with this. Put together a business plan, choose the right tools, continuously learn from both successes and failures and you know, go back and listen to all of our back catalogue of podcast episodes because there's so many tips and, and there are so many pitfalls that you will avoid by just listening to one particular tip that we provide that will save you thousands of pounds. So if you want to follow a system that teaches you how to build a dropshipping business capable of generating multiple seven figures, then grab a copy of my book, The Home Turf Advantage. I've got a copy here. If you head over to htabook.com, you can pick up a copy of that book. That's what you're looking for. And and um, that will really help you get started on your journey with dropshipping using the Home Turf Advantage model. Just a quick heads up, if you'd like to share your questions, stories, successes, or challenges, you can email us directly at podcast at dropshipunlocked.com. And you never know, we might even feature you on the next podcast episode. Also, if you want access to today's show notes or any of the resources we've mentioned in the episode today, then head over to dropshipunlocked.com forward slash podcast. We also have a small favor to ask of you. If you enjoyed the show so far, you could take a minute to leave us a rating and review on your podcast platform of choice. You wouldn't believe how much your reviews help us grow the podcast. We'll even read out some of our favorites on the next episode. So if you want to be featured on the show, please do go ahead and leave us a review today. Thanks so much for your support. We really couldn't do it without you. And we absolutely love hearing what you think of the podcast. Okay, now let's answer a question from a listener on the podcast. Remember, if you want to get your questions answered, all you need to do is email us. It's podcast at dropshipunlock.com. And we will answer your question on an episode coming soon. The question we have in today is from Arachman. And he posted his question to us actually in a YouTube comment. So you can do that as well. And Arachman said... Or he's asked, if I do join the Dropship Unlocked Masterclass, would you teach me how to contact and sign suppliers myself? Or do you approach suppliers on my behalf and give me the store? Secondly, what would be my day-to-day -day tasks for running a dropshipping business? Okay, well, thank you for your question, Arafman. So I think the first thing to think of is Dropship Unlocked are kind of like your co-pilot. We're in the flight deck with you. We're there, you know, navigating you through the business world but you're the captain, you are the, the pilot, right? You're in charge, it's your business. We don't take equity, we don't want to take revenue share from you, we don't want to force you into some kind of profit share arrangement where you know we'll forever own a percentage of your business. It is 100% your business. We are an education company. We obviously do this ourselves with our own stores, but we work with you at Dropship Unlocked to show you how to do it, but we can't do it for you because it is your business. So we wouldn't be contacting suppliers for you but of course I, I will say if you're nervous about doing that you could have someone else do it for you if for some reason you didn't want to do it yourself but I wouldn't worry about it it's not that bad especially when you have the written phone and the email scripts that we provide that are tried and tested but if you wanted to you could bring in like a friend or family member to help with that particular part of the process using the same adapted phone and email scripts that we provide if you can't land the plane alone then what will you do if you're flying solo in the future you know without us as your co-pilot then you won't know how to do it so that's why it's important that you take the lead on that we'll guide you through every single step through from finding suppliers registering your company validating your niche you know right through to adapting your script and, and signing those suppliers in your own tone of voice in language that you're comfortable with in fact we had a member of our dropship unlocked masterclass program yesterday philip 
who just announced to the uh, community that he just signed his very first UK supplier. So he now has a fully functioning business up and running with products ready to sell from the UK. And yeah, he's very excited. And that's nearly a daily occurrence inside our community. So really good to see. That's right. Yeah, so amazing progress from Philip, who I think only joined the program three weeks ago. And he's already got his first supplier on board. And as you can see, he's done that all off his own back, but we've taught him the scripts. We've told him how to do it. And he's found that supplier and got them on board. And then that's going to ultimately lead to some of the other success that we've seen recently. I know that Andy shared with us recently that he's made £22,000 worth of sales in his first month of running ads. And he's achieved about a 20 ROAS, a 20 return on ad spend. And we're not asking for any of that because he's done it all himself. We've just provided him with the step-by-step program that he can follow to get himself to that point. So Araman's second question, Lewis, was all about how it looks to run the dropshipping business day-to-day. So could you let us know what are the sort of day-to-day tasks that you do to run a dropshipping business? Certainly. So it depends on what phase of the business you're in. If you're in build and grow phase, you'll probably be putting in more hours and more work than if you're in just kind of maintain and coast and, and glide phase, right? So I think it, what it will probably come down to eventually once you're up and running is just managing your team, ensuring everyone's aligned with your business goals, making sure you know you might have a morning catch-up call with your virtual assistant or assistants if you have multiple. And occasionally you might pay invoices to suppliers, handling any financial responsibilities, transferring money around. You know, usually we can build up credit terms with our suppliers and then maybe we go to them and pay them £60,000 in one go, you know, at the end of the month or something like that for all of the sales that you took that month. So that's the kind of thing that you probably won't even need to be doing daily. The day-to-day stuff might be like monitoring and optimizing your ad performance, ensuring that you've got the right marketing strategies set up, you know, perhaps optimizing some of your emails in Klaviyo in our email autoresponder system to just make sure you're getting higher click-through rates, higher open rates for your marketing emails because that's going to earn you more money the more you can optimize those. But I think, yeah, when you really get this ticking and and the whole machine is kind of working, it becomes more about delegation at that point and optimizing processes, things like teaching your VA how to optimize product descriptions so that you're not the one necessarily doing it yourself. And then at that that stage, I'd say, Araman, you really have earned it and you can just enjoy the time you know you've worked hard on this i think sometimes people are so focused on the grind and they work so hard that they forget to enjoy the fruits of their labor when they reach it but like you said the other day going away to milan whilst your business is paying for that trip in the background making sales you've earned it so travel spend time with the family do what you want enjoy the fact that this business allows you to be time free and location independent because that's one of the reasons why you started it in the first place exactly so once you get to that position enjoy it you know the daily task will go down actually as you grow because you can delegate more and outsource more so thank you for your questions Araman. some great questions in there and hopefully that advice has been helpful for you now we're going to highlight a recent listener review that we've had for the podcast And this one has come in from Johan. And Johan says, for me, it's super nice to hear a reminder why it's so good to take this path. I had my first sale yesterday. Amazing, Johan. Thank you so much for your kind review. And we'll continue to release these podcast episodes. So we hope you'll continue to enjoy our stories. And congratulations on your first sale yesterday. If you wish to support the podcast, it really couldn't be easier. The way for us to gauge if our content is hitting home is through your reviews on your preferred podcast platform. Alternatively, if YouTube's more your thing, don't hesitate to drop a comment on the video of this episode. Your thoughts could make a guest appearance in our next program. And why not take a moment to share this episode with someone in your network? Today's exploration of the lesser known truths of e-commerce, especially our candid take on what dropshipping gurus won't tell you might be the real talk a friend or family member needs by sharing this podcast you're helping to counter the misinformation out there and could spark that essential conversation about building an online business with authenticity and success thanks for joining us on this episode of the dropship unlocks podcast we hope you found the discussion both inspiring and entertaining if you're ready to begin your own high ticket dropshipping journey then here's what to do next I've taken all of the years of my own experience, both in running my e-commerce businesses and teaching hundreds of others how to do the same. And I've condensed it all into my book, The Home Turf Advantage. It's your comprehensive guide designed to help you create your own e-commerce business. And you can grab your copy today at htabook.com. 
Stay connected by subscribing to the podcast. This way you'll never miss an episode packed with valuable insights. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, please leave us a review. Your feedback motivates us and we love sharing our favourite reviews on future episodes. And thank you for deciding to spend your time with us today. We really appreciate you and we look forward to sharing more high ticket dropshipping insights with you on our next episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast.